We've had five days of rain and finally it stopped yesterday. So I had time to let the soil dry up a little bit. And now I only have today and tomorrow to work on the garden and it's still pretty windy. So I have to take advantage of it or else I won't get to do anything at all. Now this iris, the yellow and the purple, can I say blue iris, but it's got more of a purple, isn't it? They are just absolutely beautiful. I love them. Oh, Behind me, the sisters is already starting to wake up. And also the cactus from my friend Jem is calling out to me and say, plant me. But today I would really like to work on my garden. Finish off this corner and I have a whole heap of mess here, but I have to stop and look at this. Aren't they beautiful? I think they're called blue eye grass. I started with a couple of small plants and I love them so much that I started spreading them out here. That's just beautiful, isn't it? Because before I only had like one or two, but now planted in mass like that during spring when they flower, it's just glorious. So now today I am going to work on this pot that needs to be filled up, but I put something in here, but now it's gone. Hang on, I have to look for it. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. I'm having a very difficult time deciding what plant I should be putting in this pot here. Of course, the area is going to be shaded in summer, but in winter, it's going to be exposed to the element because this is a deciduous tree, so all the leaves will be gone. Plus, I'm not growing this tree behind me for that as a tree because this is going to die one day. <laughs> I just want it to grow so I can hang things off it. So as a solid structure to put things on. But for now, we are tackling the issue of this pot. So what plant can I put in here? Should I stick with the cottage garden idea or, or should I actually put something in here that's going to be in keeping with the theme of my succulent garden? This is Aloe Dorothea, one of my favorite plants, but the bad thing about this plant is that it's not frost hardy. I was gonna give up on it a few months ago, but then now I decided to keep it after it has survived another winter outside. So it wasn't really out in the open. It's still sort of semi-protected where I placed it, but it's exposed to the cold air and the winter chill basically, and it has survived. So now I'm going to keep it, but what I'm gonna do with this one is just have it sitting on this log here. And every winter I have to bring it back to a spot where it survived from and keep it there and then put something else in here during winter but on the other side here I'll show you this is a very hardy Ionium this was growing out in the open where it was but I guess where it was is sort of a, in a low land area was worked quite high up where we are here and so this is more prone to the frost than where it was so as you can see that Ionium arboreum is already gone some of it are still alive at the back there. You can see some of the top has gone, but the babies on the stem started growing again. So this is going to be a struggle trying to grow that. So I'm still gonna give it another winter. Next winter, if it survives that, that's where I'm gonna plant that specific plant there, which is a Ionium arboreum, which is just green. Now, over here, I already have my Euphobia. Euphobia is quite hardy. This one's very frost hardy. It's already been with me for a long time. And to think I only started with one small head like that before. But now it has grown into a cluster and I'm not gonna repot it because uh, it's quite happy where it is. Now, that Ionium there, which is a crested one, so if you can see there's still some cresting left on that one still alive see look but there was a big crest area where it had before that got hit by the frost somehow it still survived it's still alive and it's growing new babies only because it's being protected by this pot here which has got the cotyledon 
uh, sticky finger or lady fingers, <laughs> sticky fingers, because it kind of feels sticky when you touch it. So now I have this new arrangement here with got Sempervibum, which is going to survive the frost. Euphobia in the center, Flanagan eye, a couple of Grasula Coralita, and hopefully they will survive. And also some Bronze Delight with another Polydonis hybrid over here, which is, I think, Black Flea, that one there. And a couple more Sam Provivum varieties. Now, I'm just hoping that this sedum here with a really long name, which I can't remember, which is beautiful, it's a variegated plant, will sort of just, see it's got its roots sticking out in the air. Look at that, aerial roots. So hopefully it will find soil and embed itself and grow. Hang on. There you go. So hopefully that will grow there and saying, come over here. There's a big pot here for you to invade. And also this mangave was quite big before. It has suffered from the frost, but the important fact is it's still alive. Now let's go back to our pot here. At first I was going to plant all these Dadleia and Echeveria or Pet and also Hyperion which has survived the frost and also this Jack Flash over here. This would have been perfect plant to put in here as a big plant first. So the pot is big enough to accommodate all of them and I can still put some small succulents in between. That was the idea for some. But since this is an exposed area and it's quite open, some unsavory <laughs> character might be tempted to wander in here because it's still open so while the tree here which I don't know if this is an elm tree or maybe it's another small elm tree as well I don't think it's silver birch now I'll see if this is an elm tree I might have it feels like it so I might have to chop it off and just plant the bottle brush over here that's growing right now and the sisters black by the way is all blooming they're starting to bloom so it's going to be gorgeous once they bloom up instead of succulents i thought i'm still going to plant instead of this leafy soft enticing inviting succulents here i decided now i'm going to plant these phobias and serious perovianus i think it's not the perovianus or serious something but anyway so i am going to be placing all of this in that pot there so that way cactus and cottage garden so it's still in keeping with my succulent garden but it will put a lot of people off so I think I better get on with the job so first of all the piece that was the stones or the highlight of this pot would be this beautiful rock that I found in one of our perfecting trip. This would be like a reminder of that trip where I got this from. So I'm gonna put this in as a background. Okay, oh that's heavy. Okay. Go, go, go there. So that one's already set. Look how gorgeous it's gonna be. It's actually looking at the Greco over there. <laughs> Now this one, I have to move things around and for this one here, I think I'm going to put this cactus here. This is quite dangerous. Someone's going to say, that's an ugly cactus. Pretty pots, but ugly cactus. Anyway, you will have to go here. I'm sorry. I'm going to put a thorn amongst the roses, not roses. But so can you see it? Yes, I can. See, look, you can see it like that yellow ugly thing sticking out there. But it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> I'm still going to put something to draw into this area. I want it to look pretty, but not too pretty. You know what I'm saying? So that way it's not, you know, encouraging someone to just say, okay, I'm going to take that one. Thank you very much. This one now, this is another Euphobia Mamillaria with a Halbingeri Echeveria Halbingeri I I like to say Halbingeri I but now I'm gonna remove this is a really pretty pot I don't want to leave it in that pot because I want it to grow more 
pluck it out. Hopefully I take all the lot. And I have to be careful not to get, to remove the sap or get spiked. It's got a little bit of spike on this plant. So anyway, okay. Now that's out. And now this one, I want it to cover this part of the rock. I just want the top to show. So I don't really want to put something that's too high in that pot, but I need my, my weeder. This is a weeder, but it's so handy to use it in the garden. But this one now can go in here with, do I do that that way? So, okay, you can go in there. Oops, don't wanna get spike. Now, I could actually remove this echeveria. I'll take you out for now. Okay, there's one. Now, next one. Next one is this. Euphobia flanigonii, which is just so gorgeous. I do love them. And a lot of people hate them because they're euphobious. But this one even, hang on, I have to see how it's got like caked in and it was all weeds growing on top of it. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway. So, I'm gonna remove all the soil and stick it in, okay? Okie dokie. Very easy. We use the poker stick again. This is good for that. Now I'm gonna grab the bull by the horn really firmly. If you're flimsy, you're gonna get a uh, spike. But if you're firm with your hold, it's much better. Okay, just shake it loose, shake it all over. Okay, I think, are you a baby now? I'll leave it because I really like that baby in there, okay? Now this one, I'm going to put you where the freco is. So that way it looks like it's going after the euphobia. But I need my little poker stick. Now, the levers and I think I like it better that way. We take some dirt here, we put over there. We push that all in there first. And there you go. So now this is going to encourage that to go taller and that one will go spread out this way. I just discovered something. This little pot that, the sack that I had a while ago where the mammillaria was planted in and also those couple of halbingerii guess what no holes Woohoo! so it shows that they can survive being waterlogged that's why it's so wet i was wondering why it's so wet because it's got no holes so euphobia can survive with its roots under water for a long time very long time but it survived <laughs> this poor euphobia is in a narrow pot so I couldn't get to it, so I just decided to pull the roots off. Look how long that is! Oh my goodness! Okay, come on. <laughs> it's like an umbilical cord. Okay, we'll break it. Ah. Oh my lord, look how long! Wow! Look how long that is! Can you see that? I don't know if you can even see that, but that's such a long, 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 long roots. So, we just cut it off. Do you want to keep your roots? Okay, sorry. Okay, you can't. Ah, there you go, we've cut off the umbilical cord because it's about to flower. And I do like three. I'm gonna put that in here. Okay. I kept forgetting my little. Okay, we put you here and deep roots. So, we're gonna put you there, oopsie, doesn't matter. We made a mess, but it's okay. We got plenty more soil. Soil, oh, I'm talking funny again. Okay, there you go. All done, so three. Now what else can I plant in here? So at the moment, I got a couple of pots just sitting there, just so I can see what it would look like. The one on the right is Ionium Holospatulatum. It's got this cute little 
rosette like look at that it's just little gorgeous it's just gorgeous and this is actually been grown out in the open so there's a certain amount of protection but it's out in the open and it has survived our winter frost so now it's even flowering it's got a mild scent fragrance but this I can control and chop off and turn into a bonsai if it doesn't sort of looks good being grown there but anyway I'm about to propagate this as well so I might as well put this in here and also this one Crassula what are you I lost the name I think this is called Crassula Dependence this one so nice upright little it's, it's like a small tree isn't it and the cotyledon pendants over here or woody eye sorry this is woody eye uh, it's lost a lot of its leaves but it doesn't matter it can die or it can live it doesn't matter but I just I'm just after this one so I'm gonna plant that in there now with this plant one side of it is sort of straight up so it would be perfect to sort of angle it that way so it can sort of sprawl this way and that would be just lovely I think and I didn't want to remove the most of the soil so I left a lot of the soil because I don't want to disturb the root ball as much as possible so now I'm gonna take off a lot of the soil in here just so I can accommodate this plant now hang on deep oh look there's a bee hello bee you like my flower that I'm giving you you can get lots of nectar to give to your precious queen hi now okay now okay we're gonna Okay. I think that looks beautiful. Anyway, I still have to trim it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But the flower, I really like the flower, so I'm going to leave it for now. And we can always remove it. But once it's gone, you can't put it back. You can grow it and wait for it to grow, but it'll take a while. So I'm just filling up the holes now. I'll put some more soil in, just digging it in, just making sure there's some soil underneath. There's nothing worse than putting it in and a couple of days later, it's just gonna go plunk. Okay. There, that will do for now. And I'm gonna find a couple more plants to put at the front. So far, this is what it looks like. I really, really, really love these uh, flowers, but they have, to, they have to go. And I'm putting some granite all around. So there's quite a few combination of different plants or succulents that's in here. One thing they all have in common is that they're all frost hardy. So I have frost hardened them. And so now I'm just going to continue adding some top dressing to make them look pretty. There you go, I think that looks pretty. Now, I got a couple of plants that spare, so we just put that there and that will just grow. A couple of the leaves we throw in there and they will just take root and grow on their own. They will find their way in the world. And a couple of the Halbin Jerry eye, we have to put that in, but we have to clean it first. And two Halbin Jerry. Ah, 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 okay. <laughs> we just insert it there. They will just find their own way. And I think I have another one. And that should be it. And this one I have to insert it right up the top so it will grow on top and sprawl down 
into this freco that's going to eat it so this is it finito so for now because I still want to do some chop 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 we're gonna bonsify this one we're gonna trim it to make it look like a bonsai arrangement but for now I want to enjoy those flowers so what do we have here so we've got Graptiveria phantom sort of hanging nicely and this is frost hardy and that will just grow more and every time there's one that's out of place we can just break it off and stick it in that'll be fine I've got Sedivaria hummily on the green side inside those ones there that's hummily of course Euphorbia flaniganii on the outside I've got three sisters and Halbin Jerry Hechevaria in here which I've got three of them so there's a numerology arrangement to this arrangement, but anyway, and that one is Sedeveria Mayalen or Echeveria Marcus, whichever. That will just sprawl down and again, very hardy plant. And if I want to propagate it again, this one, waste not, want not, I always say, remove the leaves, throw that in there and that will just grow. Now we got the Crassula dependence over here which is just going to grow nicely into the background of the mountain the mountain i like the mountains got little peekaboo holes in the bottom there and also peekaboo holes big hole on the top and of course in there there's a secret hiding which is the spiky euphobia mammillaria and so are you the star of the show this ionium hybrid which is just so gorgeous and as the season changes this plant would still grow green but when it's stressed out it will go red like this one or so even prettier than that one in the heat of summer so right now we're still cooling down we're still on the cool side of our season even though it's already spring supposed to warm up but we've been having some really cool weather so that's why it's still closed off so anyway guys i'm just gonna play around in my little garden here and that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed this little arrangement that finally i'm so happy that i was able to have done and so now i'm just gonna work on the other components of this garden which is filling up that area where i've got my basket and my granite dressing thank you so much for watching guys and hope i see you in the next video